Hi, in this video we will use MokuLab and demonstrate the principle of a lock-in amplifier. Lock-in amplifiers are a widely used instrument that can extract a signal of known frequency that is overwhelmed by noise. This is a two-part video. In part one we will introduce and demonstrate the heterotyne detection and then apply this to the situation of a lock-in amplifier. Then in part two we will introduce two important parameters of a lock-in amplifier, phase and filter bandwidth. So let's start. Heterodyne conversion shifts one frequency range into another. Typically this converts a high frequency radio signal to a much lower frequency as in the operation of a heterodyne radio receiver. Why is this useful? Propagation properties of radio signals vary considerably across frequency bands but useful ranges are in the megahertz to hundreds of megahertz or even higher. So, there is a need to transform or mix down the signal to a range that can be meaningfully processed by analog to digital converters and signal processors. This mixing or heterodyne function essentially implements a multiplication of two signals. The signal of interest is mixed or multiplied with a locally generated oscillator. If we have one signal at frequency F1 and another at frequency F2, after the multiplication we will have a new signal containing two frequency components, one at the sum and one at the difference of the original frequencies. Then a low pass filter is applied to filter out the sum component, which leaves a low frequency component at the difference between F1 and F2. This is also sometimes referred to as the intermediate frequency. Let's show this process in action with MokuLab. First, we set up two Moku Labs. We will operate the Silver Moku as a waveform generator to produce our signal and local oscillator F1 and F2. Then, the Black Moku will operate as a lock-in amplifier instrument to perform the signal mixing or heterodyne function. Taking an iPad, we're going to connect to the silver Moku, then launch the waveform generator instrument. We output two sine waves, one at 1 kHz and one at 1.1 kHz, and synchronize the phases. Now we switch the iPad to connect to the black Moku and launch the lock in amplifier instrument. Inside the lock-in amplifier is a mixer function. Using the oscilloscope tool built into the lock-in instrument, we can verify that the black Moku is indeed receiving signals at 1 kHz and 1.1. Now, enable the probe point after the mixer. We can see there is a high frequency and a low frequency component in this newly generated signal. By turning on the FFT feature, and viewing the signal in the frequency domain, we observe two peaks at around 100 Hz and 2.1 kHz, which is as we would expect, a signal at the sum and a signal at the difference of the two inputs. Next, we probe the signal after the low pass filter. Initially, the filter bandwidth is way above 2.1 kHz, so we observe the two components have a similar amplitude. Next, we narrow down the filter bandwidth to about 100 Hz. We have now successfully attenuated the high frequency component to about minus 55 dBm. Going back to the time domain, now we have our intermediate frequency signal at 100 Hz. Let's review the math. We have two sine waves, one at 1 and one at 1.1 kHz. We multiply them together by applying the trigonometric identity. We get our signal at the sum and difference of the frequencies. Next, we apply the low pass filter to filter out the sum and we obtain our 100 Hz. This is the very basic operation of the heterodyne. Now, let's think about the function of the lock in amplifier, a special case of a heterodyne where our signal of interest is at the same frequency as a locally generated oscillator or F1 equals F2. What happens? 
Moku Lab is a great tool for investigating and interactively learning how the signals operate. So, let's grab two iPads. Launching the waveform generator instrument on the silver Moku and the lock-in amplifier instrument on the black Moku. Probing at the intermediate frequency output and turning on the frequency, mean and FFT measurements. Initially, the frequency is 100 Hz as before and the mean of the signal is right about zero. Next, let's change the signal from 1.1 kHz to 1 kHz. During this process, you can see the frequency of our intermediate frequency output get lower and lower. Eventually, it goes to a DC signal, which also reflects on the mean measurement. Let's check this with the math. Replace F1 with a 1 kHz signal. Now, instead of 100 Hz, we get a zero frequency or DC component and a high frequency component at twice the input frequency. If we filter out the high frequency, we obtain a DC signal with its amplitude proportional to the original signal. This is the lock-in amplifier function, and with the local oscillator tracking the signal of interest, we can extract the original signal amplitude from a background of noise. So why do we want to do this lock-in amplification? One of the most important reasons is the existence of a certain type of noise, 1 over F noise, shown in the black curve. The amplitude of the 1 over F noise is inversely proportional to the frequency. The low frequency region has a much higher noise floor compared to the high frequency range. One way to avoid the 1 over F noise is to modulate our signal to a high frequency. Effectively, you want to apply a bandpass filter to filter the desired frequency and obtain its amplitude. In practice, a good, narrow bandpass filter is not easy to make and it's highly inflexible to change filters every time you change the frequency. So, instead of bandpass filtering, we can mix the signal with a local oscillator at the exact same frequency, which brings the signal back to DC. Then, apply a fixed low-pass filter to extract our desired signal. This process is called demodulation and is the fundamental process of a lock-in amplifier. In the next part of the video, we will discuss two of the most important parameters of a lock-in amplifier, phase and filter bandwidth. Thank you for watching and see you next time.